Hello everybody. Um, we're having to come to you like this because of an outbreak in both a cold and COVID in our church and our desire is to not be a super spreader. Um, we try to disinfect everything in the church as much as we can to keep that from happening, but uh, we have a number of people that have been out sick and for that reason, our ladies going out to eat on Tuesday is going to be um, canceled for now. I'm sure they'll figure something out in the future. But for right now, it's just uh, too clumsy and too many people will be left out. And we want everybody to be able to be a part. And so we're not going to do that. And this is a, a really blessed time of year. You know, as I was thinking about it and thinking about Christmas and and you, I guess your mind naturally rolls to Christmases of the past. And I remember one year we got this little story of the candy cane, how a candy maker wanting to um, make a special candy for Christmas got a piece of of candy material and wrapped it with one large stripe for the atonement of the blood and then he put a couple stripes in it because by his stripes we are healed and you know I found that little story and and we copied it and we bought a whole bunch of candy canes and uh, passed that, uh, those candy canes out with, uh, stapled to that little story of the making of the candy cane. And that was when we, we were able to, I took a bag full of candy canes to work. I was working at the mine and sharing them with everybody and you know everybody seemed to be blessed by it nobody got offended <laughs> it was the story of the candy cane it was the testimony of somebody who wanted to express and show the death of jesus and the blood he shed and the stripes he bore for us this is a, a glorious season this is a time of rejoicing now was jesus born on december 25th i don't know he might have been, but I don't know. In likelihood, a lot of people think it's more like the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. But regardless of when he was born, we know he was born. What was important was who he was and what he was, not the details of everything that people like to quibble about. And so the Christmas story starts out this way, and, and in this Christmas season, um, we like to celebrate and make it very personal. We like to have a Christmas Eve communion service, and, and, uh, um, and this year we'll, we'll just have a morning service at 10 o'clock, and we'll give you plenty of time to be with your family. And we won't do Sunday night so that you can uh, be with your family during that time. So let's turn today to Luke chapter 2. And it says, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And this is 
this is very interesting, but um, in those days there were some rather uh, strict purification laws. Um, and for a woman, when she bore a child, uh, had to be isolated until the, she went through a time of her purification. And I think it was fortunate. Um, Joanne and I, in 2009, visited Israel, and there's a huge cave there in Bethlehem, which I would well imagine might be an inn. I can see that being a place for people to stay. It was large, but there was no privacy. It was just a large room and wouldn't provide much more than, than a place to lie down. In Israel, um, many of the buildings are preserved simply because they didn't use much wood. They built houses out of rocks. And so the rocks tended to remain for a long period of time. And, uh, and as a result, we can, uh, archaeologists can find um, various structures that have been built for thousands of years uh, that have been buried. And the reason they can is it wasn't made out of wood and other materials that would disintegrate quite so easily. And so being in that inn, there was a fair amount of room but it, if it was full of people, it wouldn't have been a very good place to have a baby. Uh, however, God always has a plan. He always has a way. He always has a fulfillment. And there was a fulfillment that had to be done in a precise way. So God did not come to the folks in the end. Um, we read from verse 8. Now, there were in the same country shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were all greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Wow, what a party. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which should be to all people. Hmm. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, God gave us a Savior. He didn't give us a toy truck or a doll. He gave us a Savior. And Santa Claus didn't bring it. But there was a gift of God through Mary, a Savior, a Deliverer. One who would save God's people from their sin. And this time of year, we are all online ordering gifts. We're going to stores, Black Friday sales. Somebody once commented, it's kind of ironic that that the day after Thanksgiving, we go fighting through stores for the best deals <laughs> instead of being thankful for, for what we already have. 
But God gave us a precious little baby, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The gift came and was announced to shepherds. Um, but these particular shepherds in Bethlehem were a different group of people than most shepherds. They were the ones that were the caretakers of the lambs that were used in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, just in a normal course of a year's time, would need about 730 lambs a year plus extra lambs for the various feasts and festivals. So Bethlehem um, had a specialty and monetarily um, they couldn't sell any lamb that had a broken leg or was deformed in any way. And so the shepherds would take the lamb and they would wrap it and bind it um, to protect it from being rolled over on by another animal or suffering some kind of damage and they would protect the little lambs and make sure that they were they were properly cared for and it says and, and um, Jesus was wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid in the manger. Now the shepherds were in the business and they knew exactly where that manger was located because it was their job to take care of that lamb. And they ran and they came to see this gift of God that was given. And they went throughout all the town telling everybody about what they'd experienced and what they had seen. And I wonder if we could, in this time, when so many people are lost and haven't found their way in, have tried to find their answer in substance abuse and other things that destroy people. You know, there's one universal characteristic of everything that we call sin, and that is it destroys people, and that's what Jesus came to deliver us from. But God came to bring us a Savior. Have we given the gift of a Savior? I think is the question that we have to ask this time of year. Have we truly invested ourselves in sharing the fact, as the shepherds did, that there's a Savior that is born? Have we gone the extra mile to in some way testify to who the Savior is and what He can do. And one of the biggest tragedies in the world is for somebody to know there are many people today that believe that there is a heaven or a hell, but they don't know how to get there. I was doing a memorial service and, and uh, And it was very interesting. And during the memorial service, I said, you know, um, we talk about heaven. But I said, it wouldn't do, me, wouldn't do you any good for me to tell you there was a place like heaven if I didn't tell you how to get there. And sometimes we need to make sure that our loved ones know how to get there that they understand that there is a Savior. His name is Jesus. He is Christ the Lord. Um, Isaiah paints this picture that we like to read and, and um, I've been blessed in the past to be able to go here Handel's Messiah performed. But it says this in Isaiah chapter 9, For unto us a child is born, 
Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Um, those two terms, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, are not talking about a man. They're talking about somebody coming to give himself for us. Um, uh, in Revelation, we find this story, um, this term that is given, Revelation 13. And it says, verse 8, Revelation 13, 8, it says, All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus was the one that made the world and the foundation of the world. And yet, from the beginning of time, Jesus looked ahead and had a plan that you would be saved before mankind was even created. Because the world was set in place before mankind was created. And yet, God looked ahead in time and he saw you, and he saw that you needed a savior um, over here in Isaiah once again, um, Isaiah has a lot of interesting prophecies, but I, I ran across this, um, in Isaiah 46, um, in verse 9, it says, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient time things that are not done, yet done. And here we have God saying, there isn't any other God. There isn't anybody else out there. There are created beings, and I'm sure many of them we have no idea, and we'll have no idea till we get to heaven. But on the same page in my Bible, over in Isaiah 45, uh, there's an interesting scripture. Um, 45:21. Tell and bring forth your cause. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? God is not is the only one that extends from eternity to eternity. No created being can say that. Only God. And then he says this, And there is no other God beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. He is a Savior God, and there isn't anyone like Him. And yet He is a Savior, the gift of a Savior God to us. In a manger, is beyond our human comprehension to understand such things as as eternity, such things as God being spirit. When we live in a very physical dimension of this flesh, and yet 
Jesus came to be the perfect Lamb of God. I find this so interesting that Jesus came into the same place, was born in the place of the lambs that were to be offered as a sin sacrifice. And that was the male lamb was to be offered as a sin sacrifice. And the ewes were to be offered as other sacrifices, as thanks offerings. But the sin sacrifice was the male lamb. And God sent his lamb in the form of his son Jesus to be the perfect sacrifice, to be the perfect savior that our sins could be removed one that was examined as his parents took him after he was born to the priest and the lamb was examined <laughs> and qualified at that time to be a perfect lamb and prophesied over um, to Mary about his future. And God had a plan, and the reason that God implemented that plan was that he loves you. And he loves your next-door neighbor. And he loves the people you work with. And he loves that one in the family that's going crazy right now. And sometimes people in our family are hard to deal with. But we have to remember that God has one goal for them. And that is for him to be their savior. That he loves them so very much that he ordained that he would be their savior if they would only receive him. The lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. If they would say, God, forgive me, cleanse me, make me your child. I want to know you. And today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I ask you to receive him right now. And just simply say, Dear Lord Jesus, I realize I've sinned and not done everything as I should. But God, I know that you sent your son Jesus from heaven to become a man. And he died for my sins. And I ask you to cleanse my sin as I confess my sin. Your word says you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right now in this Christmas season, don't you think it would be a very good time to receive a Savior, which is Christ the Lord? There was no sleigh and no reindeer there, but a host of angels worshiping God, rejoicing in what God had done. And actually, it's kind of a mystery to the angels, the Bible says this business of salvation. But for some reason, God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God wants your loved one to have eternal life. He wants to have them in heaven for all eternity. And that's God's plan and that's God's message for Christmas. That's why he came to be a savior, a redeemer. And I hope that you have fully received him and have chosen to turn your life in that direction to be the very best child of God that you can be. God bless you. And have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas.